I need you here on my neck, girl, Mac. Every hour of the day. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Where were you born? Where did you grow up? Um, I was born and raised in North New Jersey. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> not far from you, huh? No, not at all. <laughs> and a lot of my family still is there. Um, I, I moved um, to California in 1973. I bought a house here, but that was because Jerry Schilling, who I later married, mm -hmm. lived here and we were dating. So. I bought a house and I um for my mother and my son and myself when I got mad at Jerry. <laughs> uh -huh. And um moved out here and Elvis had just given me a nineteen seventy five Cadillac. So, um I flew to Memphis to get to pick up the car and Jerry did too. I mean he was he Elvis had given him a car too. Mm -hmm. So we all drove out. I had my son, my son's friend. And um, my brother, my mother, <laughs> and Jerry, and myself, we all drove from Memphis to um, to California. Wow. And... Um, that was good for a new car. You can... You know. uh, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it was, such, you know, it was a Cadillac, and I wasn't used to no. a car that big. Yeah, he, yeah, Elvis liked his Cadillacs, didn't he? Yeah, he did. <laughs> when did really you good. start, when did you start in the music business? I started, I've always been in the music business since I was five. I, um, my father had a radio show in New Jersey, a gospel show, and so I, um, he took me to the gospel show oh. when I was five, and I sang on the gospel show. Mm hmm So that was, that was fun. And you later became, uh, in, t in groups, or? Um, I mean, you well, didn't start right off with the suites, did you? Uh, yes, I did. Oh, I, did you? I, I taught school, too. I taught in high school English uh -huh. for three years, and then, but I was uh, singing all along. I was uh, working all along, doing sessions and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, the first session I did was uh, with Dionne Warwick. Oh, I love her. And Burt Backpack had called me and told me, you got to do this session. So I said, because Dionne had called me previously, and I didn't want to do a session. I was afraid. Mm -hmm. And so Burt called me, and... Um, convinced me to do a session with Dion, so I'm on all of Dion's early stuff. Wow. And um, when I did sessions all along, you know, but Dion and I went to the same church. Dion, her sister Dee Dee, mm -hmm. and uh, Sissy Houston, who's Whitney Houston's mother. Yeah. She was our choir director, and she was one of the sweet inspirations. Another uh, God-given talent. Uh, yes, she is. Oh, goodness. And, um, so I, I did sessions and, and all of that mm -hmm. until uh, we, we did uh, became a sweet inspiration. Right. Jerry Wexler uh, called us into his office and gave us a proposition, you know. <laughs> and, um, would you girls like to have a group of your own? Of course we said yes, even though we were doing other things, you know. Mm -hmm. So I had to quit teaching school. I didn't have to. I taught a little longer, you know, but... Um, quit teaching school so I could do this singing thing, which has always been the love of my life. Mm -hmm. And then I uh, I taught, and then because we were traveling so much, I had to leave the teaching job. So I left and um, became a session singer and an entertainer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think How did you my get... former students know about that. Uh -huh. but, uh, one of the um, kids that I had in my English class, he... Let's see, who did he meet? He met, um, he met somebody that I know. Oh, oh, he wrote to my, um, our producer. And he wanted to know, um, was I the same Myrna 
Smith that used to be his teacher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so he wrote him back, yes, it was the same one. I was a teacher in South Brunswick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when did the Sweet Inspirations get the Elvis gig? In 1969. Wow, right from the... Uh, right from the beginning, yes. Wow, and what did you think? Um, actually, we weren't too impressed. <laughs> really? You know, that's funny that you said that a lot of the people that I've interviewed had said the same thing. So, yeah. so well, you I, weren't really an Elvis fan? No, I wasn't an Elvis fan until I met him. And then I became one instantly. So you became a fan of the man? A fan of the man, yes. Yeah, he's a, he was a wonderful man. Can you tell me about when you first met him? Well, um, we were sitting on the stage at the, um, it was called, it was the, um, wasn't the Hilton then, it was the... International. International. We were sitting on the stage waiting for him to appear for rehearsal. And then we're sitting there for about an hour, and then all of a sudden we hear, hear these loud footsteps and talking coming down. And, uh, it was Elvis and the guys. And he walked right over to us and gave us each a, a kiss on the lips. Aww. Was wonderful. <laughs> and um, it was really sweet. He was he was a sweet guy. Uh -huh. Very sweet, very normal. Was he a Nothing nice like, man? I mean, uh, a lot of people say, oh, yeah, of course he was. But, I mean, was he a good, and, and, a, and I think you know what I mean. Was he a yes, good man? Absolutely, absolutely a good man. And he and I, um, we became real good friends, you know, because um, I, was, I was dating Jerry. And, mm -hmm. um, and so we flew with him on his plane instead of... Uh, I stopped flying with the group. I started flying with Elvis. Because he, of uh, Jerry, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he was wonderful, you know? Uh-huh. Um, we'd leave right after the show if we were going to the next city. And uh, we'd go to the next city. Oops. <laughs> go to the next city and... Um, and um, and the, the rest of the band and singers didn't leave till the next morning. Mm-hmm. So I would get a good night's sleep. It must have been something to be on tour. It must have been grinding for both of you. It, it was, but um, you don't realize you're tired until you get home. Really? Yeah. You mean when the tour is all over and you're when finally... It's over and you get home for about two or three days, mm -hmm. you just sack out, you know. That's when you get tired. But you, if you keep going, you could probably go forever. But once you stop, yeah, you know, you get tired. You did an awful lot of shows, it seems. I mean... Uh... I think about 14, almost 1,400, I think. Wow, wow. Yeah. You know, a friend of mine, uh, Suma Castle and I, are, we're writing a book on uh, the uh, Sahara Tahoe. It's going to be put out by Prairie Tome Publishing, and it's going to okay. be out in about a year. Do you have any stories about the Sahara Tahoe? And I, I'm, 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 about what? The Sahara Tahoe. The Sahara Tahoe. Because, I mean, when I talked to Mr. Nielsen, uh, Sean said, you know, that it was very much laid back. A lot more laid back than like at the yeah. Hilton and stuff. Yeah, and it was much more laid back than the Hilton, and people didn't dress up like they did at the Hilton at the time. Because mm -hmm. we used to put on gowns, you know, for this to get dressed in the evening. Mm -hmm. People used to dress up much more then than they do now. They didn't wear jeans in the casino. Uh -huh. uh, you either had on a suit or a gown, and it was very, it was very nice. Mm -hmm. I liked it a lot. Do you have any special stories about the Tahoe that you can remember? or? Um, I don't remember if this is Tahoe or not. I don't think, no, it wasn't Tahoe. Mm -hmm. um, Tahoe, it was kind of, it was very laid back. I didn't like Tahoe as much as I liked Vegas, of course. Because mm -hmm. I liked all the, the flash <laughs> in the air yeah. <laughs> of Vegas. But, um, you know, we were working. And so wherever you're working, you get up for the show, and that's what I did. Mm -hmm. uh, I was surprised. I was talking to one of the other guys, too, and they said that, I mean, I had read in books that uh, there were times when people made threats against Elvis. Do you ever remember any of that, or do you ever remember when you were having to be careful because it was a threat made against him? Um, yes, I do remember the night that, um, you know, he had an ambulance on stage, and um, he came down, and, and they had the lights in the in the house up, you know, they were up so that he could, we could see the audience. It wasn't dark like it usually Through the whole show? Yeah. Wow, just so you could keep an eye on things. Yeah, well, they had, uh, and they had an ambulance backstage, and they had planned, if Elvis had told the guys, if anybody does anything, you know, mm -hmm. take care. If they get me, you take care of them. 
and it was and some guy made um, some kind of threat in the audience that night, and Elvis was on on alert. You know, he got ready to kill somebody, mm-hmm. and it turned out that I was just requesting a song. Oh my goodness! You know, I think Patty <laughs> Patty was telling me about that. Yeah. Yeah, and she said everybody was quite on edge in that. Yeah, that's right. We, we were. But everything turned out fine. The only other thing I remember that was very, very unusual was one night we had a, um, the fire department came and emptied the whole hotel. And I, I had on my pajamas. No, I didn't have on my pajamas. I had on a pajama top. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's all. And Jerry was still downstairs with Elvis. Because I, I had gone right upstairs after the last show. I put my pajamas on to go to bed. And there was a fire alarm. Well, I, I figured I'll just ignore it. I won't go down. <laughs> and they, the fire department came, knocked on my door, and said, "Get out of here!" So I had to run out in my pajama top, and I ran all. I got all the way downstairs to Elvis's dressing room. They were still down there, and we stayed down there probably until morning. And Elvis, um, he didn't know what. To Mm-hmm. Hello? You there? <laughs> I lost you. I thought, oh my gosh, she hated, she hated me. She hung up on me. I was just busy talking. Uh-huh. Um, my phone, my chin hit the little button. That's okay. So, so Elvis, uh, he was, um, you know, he wanted to do something. So it was uh, kind of dark down in the showroom. So we went up the showroom, all of us, um, who were with him that night, Mm -hmm. and he climbed over a big, tall, uh, um, it was like, it was where Anne Margaret fallen or something, you know, she fell and injured her face, Mm -hmm. well, it was um, that stuff, (laughs) you know, paint and stuff like that, Mm -hmm. and he went, he climbed over this big, tall fence. I got the paint, come, came back up, and went out in the audience and painted one of the... Um, that was at the International. Yeah, at the International. And that was, that was supposed to be me and Jerry. That <laughs> <laughs> you know, was, um, was the International people uh, angry about that at all? Or? Um, I don't think so. I, I mean, what could they do if they were? <laughs> yeah, that was, that was like that for quite a while. Yes, it was. It was like that for a long time. Yeah. He had, uh, he had the run of the hotel. It must have been it must have been awfully hard for Elvis with all the guys and that around him constantly. I mean, did he ever want to be by himself or? Uh, he he did get a chance to be by himself. He um when he was in his room usually if he didn't invite anybody in it was just he and his girlfriend mm-hmm. whoever that happened to be. So he he spent the time that he wanted by himself, but he didn't want to be by himself. He wanted somebody there with him because he didn't want to have what happened. Right. You know, Patty said the same thing, that he liked to have people around, that she could never really go home, that he wanted her to stay longer and stay longer and that. I wonder why that was. I mean, I I myself like to be by myself every once in a while, but he seemed like he had a need. Well, that's because people wanted to be around him so much Uh that he um, he just... Now, he, he liked company. Mm-hmm. But he, he picked his times when he would have company. Mm-hmm. Other than that, he would, um, you know, he'd be in that bedroom. But he would invite you in. To his bedroom? Into his bedroom, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my, my mother would shoot me if I ever invited somebody into my bedroom and talk. But that was his, that was his, you know, it was funny because Sam Thompson was saying to me, Joe, I can't tell you how many times that we'd went into the bathroom and would have conversations. Oh, yes. If he wanted to get you alone, he knew how to do it. That was his uh, office, basically, when he was on the road. Yes, and um, I remember one night, let's see, who was that? Um, um, She was, she she did these um, these, uh, movies that were kind of sexual. Mm -hmm. What was her name? Um, She was big, she was in um, a big movie. It was big in the 70s, I think. Oh, the uh, Behind the Green Door? Um... I don't think that was the name of it, but I can't remember. It was a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Her name was, uh, was it Mary? Um, I can't remember, but <laughs> she came to visit him, mm-hmm. and she had a black dress and nothing under it. 
and, and you could see through the dress. And um, she brought a guy with her, and um, who else was uh, there? Was there were people in the bedroom? And Elvis, there were three or four people in the bedroom. So Elvis said, "Myrna, come in here." So I had to go in and pretend I was his girlfriend that night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For some reason, he didn't have a girlfriend that night. So we just sat in there and talked, and I had to sit right by, right next to him, and keep because he was afraid of this. What is her name? I'll have to call you back when I remember her name. I can't he didn't want anything to do with her. No, he didn't want anything to do with her. And she was the type who was going to get him if she could, you know, uh -huh. intimidate him. He didn't want that. So she wanted to be all over him. And you yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that happened a lot. Not just that woman, but mm -hmm. a lot of people, you know, a lot of girls. Do you remember the fight? Uh, at the Sahara Tahoe when uh, somebody was beat up. Uh, I was talking to Dick Grove about it. Um, I guess somebody yeah. somebody tried to get into the Sahara Tahoe, uh, um, the, the room upstairs in the penthouse, and then uh, I guess oh, they popped the I, guy. I was, I was on that floor that night. Do you know the true story about that? You know, over the years, you, this person, I mean, David Stanley says this, well, Sean Nielsen says this. Well, this. <laughs> I was on the same floor with Elvis because Jerry had to stay on the same floor. And what had happened was um, this, um, there was this guy who came upstairs to see Elvis after the show. And I, I don't know what he did with the lights in the hall, mm -hmm. but the lights went out. And so Elvis goes running out there. Something, I guess he had some kind of threat that night. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he goes running out there, and there was, you know, an altercation, and Elvis got his punches in, and mm -hmm. Red, and <laughs> Sonny got theirs in. Well, they were like pit dogs anyway. Yes. Like, <laughs> that must have been so, you know, it's funny, because Sean Nielsen described them as pit bulls who never got into any fight, so they were always ready to go. I mean, but, you know, now, was Elvis uh, really good, as good as karate as... I mean, was he really good, or did he basically get the he bounce because good, he was he Elvis? Wasn't good. He wasn't as good as has been touted, you know. Oh, that's what I thought. Yeah, no, he wasn't that good. He he did a lot of um, working out when he was kind of not in the position to be doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, he wasn't mentally alert at the time. You know, he, was, mm -hmm. he had some drugs or something, you know. So he right. Was just, well, Elvis thing. was human. Yes, he was human. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, whatever he did... It's okay with me because he treated me wonderfully. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was a wonderful guy. Did, it must have been hard when you saw him going downhill. Well, you know what? Actually, it didn't bother me until he actually died because I always, you know, I had been to Memphis a lot of times, been to the hospital when he was in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Saw him fat, gray-haired and everything. So I knew he could pull it together. I had no idea he was going to die. How did you How did you find out, Myrna? No, well, how did we you? Flying, we were on our way to New York, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, we had gotten as far as Ta, not Ta. Yeah, I think it was um, gotten as far as not Tahoe. Um, Tahoe maybe. Gotten that far? No, it wasn't Tahoe. I don't know where it was. But we landed our plane. They told us just to turn around and go back to L.A. And instead, we landed our plane because we just figured we had forgotten somebody. So we were um, at the point where we we're going to tell them to take a private plane, take another plane because we were on the private plane. Just take a, go get a ticket and take a plane. So we landed the plane, and I had already fallen asleep. So when um, Marty Harrell, he's a good guy for you to interview too. I don't think I even know the name. He was our, um, he was a a horn player that we carried on the road with us. Uh -huh. And he's a very intelligent guy. You would like to talk oh, If you could set that up for me, that would yeah, be great. Yeah, I will. Yeah. I will. And um, so we landed, and Marty went out and and talked to the people inside the... Uh, called um, Graceland. Mm -hmm. I, I suppose he talked to Joe, and mm -hmm. Joe told him... So he gets back on the plane and, and tells everybody to get off. He, but he has to take it on the same one time. Of course, I'm figuring I'm not getting off the plane. I mean, whoever it is, just tell them to take another 
playing. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm the only one that doesn't get off. So uh, Marty had to come back on and say, Mary, could you please get off the plane? Because what I have to say, I can only say this one time. Mm -hmm. So I got off the plane, and then he told us Elvis had died. And I just went crazy. I went running around. They had to catch me and give me Valium. Oh I don't remember getting home on oh the plane. Goodness. I don't remember anything because I was like, but I did, as soon as I got home, I did call and make a reservation to go to the funeral. No hotel reservations, just an airline. Well, yeah, Jerry, you, didn't, you wanted to be there. You didn't care yeah. if you had a place to sleep. I didn't care. <laughs> uh-huh. And Jerry and I had, broke it, had had a little argument and broken up. Mm -hmm. So when I got there, no, before I left, he called and said, are you coming? I said, yes. And uh, he said, where are you staying? I said, I don't, I don't know. He said, don't worry about it. Just come. Mm -hmm. I have a place for you to stay. Joe said that? Huh? Jerry. Oh, Jerry said that, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's how we made up that time. It must have been very hard. It's been very hard for you. I mean, the whole world was devastated. And, yeah. I mean, here you fell in love with the man. and Yes. Did you, when was it, did you get a chance at least to talk to him like beforehand or anything? Or? You there? Oh, my God. Phone. <laughs> you must really hate me or something. I oh, know. It's, it's the phone. It does that to everybody. I'm sorry. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. My <laughs> God. Two times in one. I know. That must have been very hard on you. I mean, it was very hard on the world. I mean, I was 16 years old, and I was uh -huh. devastated. I know. I can't imagine. Um, I can't imagine being. Did you go to the funeral? Yes, I did. did yeah, and so you went to a Graceland and saw him yeah. lying in a. Yeah, that was horrible. Oh, it must have been. And they said it was brutal, though. The heat was brutal. It was. In fact, uh, we had to, um, you know, fans were coming from everywhere, and they were letting them in to, to view his body. And they had to stop that procession long enough for Charlie to refix Elvis' hair because it was so hot. His, and they had done an autopsy. Mm -hmm. His head was sliding off. So that, um... They had to keep the people out just so long enough for Charlie to fix mm -hmm. his hair. It was very nice of Vernon to allow people to see the body. Yeah. Was Vernon and... That's, I'm that's sorry. not usually heard of with a person of his stature, you know. Yeah, and I mean, for and if, to let them do that... Well, they do that down south still to this day, don't they? They, they allow them to lie in state at the home. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, they don't do that up here. Us Yankees, we don't do that. <laughs> That was very nice of Vernon to allow the fans to do that. Did you get along with Vernon? Oh yes, I did. Was he a nice man? He was. He was. He wasn't. Elvis was bright without having done a lot of schooling. You know. Mm -hmm. Vernon was not <laughs> bright like that. You know. He, Daddy said the uh, same thing. <laughs> yeah. He wasn't bright. He was. Um, uh -huh. He always treated me nicely. Yeah. Know? I've gone to dinner with him. He and his his girlfriend Jerry and I've gone. You know, we we. We, we were one big happy family. Uh huh. Oh, jeez. You, you use the same words that Patty does, too. She oh, says you're that you're all family. <laughs> that you all had your own little quirks and stuff, and yeah. you all had your own little fights and stuff, but God forbid somebody come in from the outside and start something. That's right. That you're all family. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Did, um, goodness, goodness I, had, I had a question on the. Oh. I so happen to be a very big Colonel Parker fan. Now, I know off the bat that you didn't care for him off the bat, but you became very close. Yeah, we became very close. Uh, we used to go out with him uh, on Sundays with uh, he and his girlfriend for, for a long time after Elvis died. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Oh, with uh, uh, Luann? Pardon me? With Luann? Yes, with Luann. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's a sweetheart. Yes, she is. Hey, I loved you on the BBC radio of the Colonel. Oh, I didn't see that. You didn't hear it? No. <laughs> I can send. I can send you a copy of the of uh, the radio program. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, uh, Charles Stone got it for me. I'll get a copy for you. You were, you were great on it. And you oh. know, I, you know, it's it's not going to be enough for people. People are just not going to like them. Uh huh. You know, Stan Thompson said it. You know, uh, um, the Colonel. Well, the, the for, on the Colonel. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the Colonel. Um, he didn't care about anybody but Elvis. And, you know, but he, but he would make you think he cared, which mm -hmm. is important enough for me. You know. Well, he took all the wax, didn't he? Everybody else, if anything went wrong, people blamed the colonel and didn't yes. blame Elvis. And well, that's what the colonel wanted. Right. Yes. He was the manager. Yes. 
Absolutely. See, I love that quote when you said that on the radio program, you know, uh, that, you know, blame it on the colonel. You know, the colonel, you know, he was the manager. That was his that's, job. That's his job. And that's what a lot more people should do. Did I lose you again? <laughs> that's got to be a record. <laughs> That has got to be a record. I know. It's, it's the phone. Well, you know what happened? I had it off the... I can't have my phone um, on where my computer's on. Mm-hmm. And I had left it just sitting on the dresser, and so um, it wasn't charged. Mm-hmm. And now I'm in my bedroom, and I'm talking on it. <laughs> well, I'm hoping not to be able to get all the uh, interview tonight, because I, I would like to be able to call you again. And, and cause I, yes, Because right now I'm kind of talking to you, and I'm a fan, too, and I can't help but <laughs> think like a fan sometimes. Oh, i got to ask her this, i got to ask her this. Well, I, anytime you want to ask me something, just give me a call. Oh, let me give you my, my cell phone, too. Here, oh, let me get a pencil. Um, but, you know, they, they're always going to make the colonel the devil. He, he was He was a very nice man who was interested in making money for him and Elvis. Mm-hmm. Because that's all he cared about. That was his job. That was his job. But the fans are never going to... No, they're not going to forgive him for that. No matter what you say, they're, never, no, they're, they're just not going to... Say. It's not going to work. It's not going to happen. No, it won't. So what are you doing now? You got, a, got another I, I show? Have, I have an interview... Another interview at about an hour. Mm-hmm. She's doing interviews today. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Um, she's, well, I appreciate you doing that. Actually, um, this you know Andrew Hearn, don't you? Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, and he told me to say hi to you because he's using a couple of my interviews. And I asked him if he wanted to use this one. He said that he had he had done an uh, interview with you. Yes, he has. Yeah, he's a nice man. He's he a great. really nice man. Yeah. So you're going to go overseas and do a tour, or is Elvis the concert going, is doing that? Oh, yes, I'm going to go and do Elvis the concert in October, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the other girls aren't going. No. Do you, do you see a lot of the band members now anymore? I mean, you know, John Wilkerson was just in California. Oh, yeah, yeah, I saw him. Um, yeah, I still work with those guys, and I still do a lot of, um, you know, interviews, and mm-hmm. we, do, we do shows, you know, with Elvis tribute artist. Yeah. But a lot of times these people are on it. Isn't that hard to do? <laughs> Is that kind of hard to do? I mean, when... It was at first. Uh-huh. But it's not now. You no. Know? Even bad ones? Oh, oh, it's hard if they're bad. <laughs> <laughs> you must say, oh, my God, okay, I'm getting paid. Uh, yeah, it can be pretty bad if they're bad. <laughs> yeah. Is, is it hard, too? I mean, like... There's not another Elvis in a scene no. you don't expect there to be. That only is going to happen once in a lifetime. Yeah. I mean, he was so charismatic. He was so talented. It must have been. It must have been hard for you to do Elvis the concert too and see him up on that big screen. It must make you think back. Well, in the beginning, it was very hard. I mean, I just broke down and started crying. Oh goodness. And um, you know, everybody's going, "What's wrong with you?" It was just very hard. Yeah, there he is. I He's loved, right there. I loved Elvis. You know, I really loved him. So it, it hurt my heart, mm. you know. Did he believe in karma? And I know he believed in God. And I, 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 it seemed like he was searching for something toward the end there. He was, but I don't know what it was. He wouldn't... You don't know what it was? No, I don't. He wouldn't tell me. <laughs> I mean, I even as a fan could see that he was searching for something. That he was... I wish I knew. I, I, you know, as a fan, you always wish that you could have yeah. met him and said, Elvis... You know, something's happening. You know, you need to straighten your act out. And But like yeah, you but said, you... wouldn't have even known he was sick. <laughs> Anything was wrong with... I mean, if you were as close... Yeah, I, I know it now. But yeah. then, yeah. yeah. Goodness. Hey, I'm going to let you go, but I'm certainly going to call you back again. Okay. And Call me anytime. I really enjoy talking to you. Okay, I appreciate it. I don't want to be a pest, though. And, and yeah. Even if you have, you hung up on me three times. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Oh, okay, I love you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.